It's strange saying goodbye to a place you never really thought of as home. For me, Boston and Cambridge, where my fancy Ivy League school is located, was merely a stepping stone. A place where I would be for four years to attend the school of my dreams, hang out a little, and then move on, hopefully in pursuit of the next adventure. I wasn't particularly excited to move to Boston. As a Londoner, I would have rather moved to New York, but alas, Boston had to do since I was accepted early to Harvard. When I first arrived, Boston struck me as an imposter city. Sure, it has a finance area, a central shopping street, a river, all things I associate with cities. But its population was tiny, and in my eyes, it was tiny too. Whenever asked about where I lived in the States, I would begrudgingly confess to be living in Cambridge slash Boston. Particularly after college, I was somewhat upset at this idea, that I was stuck in the very place I never wanted to be to begin with. My dreams of moving to LA post-graduation were shattered by the pandemic, my failing mental health, and the fact that I simply couldn't get a job in my industry due to the pandemic. Staying in Boston felt like a cheap cop-out, something I had to do but didn't want to do, and as someone who always lived life on my own terms, much to the annoyance of my family and friends, I felt that it was one of few situations I didn't have a lot of agency in. But now, having left the fake city, I can't help but feel a pit of grief in my stomach. Small waves of sadness came over me the weeks leading up to my move. The apartment I had come to love, the places that had marked my successes, the secret spots where I had fallen in love with my now husband. There were so many memories lining the streets of Cambridge and Boston that I couldn't replicate elsewhere. In a twisted turn, as is usual in my life, the one thing I hated had now become the subject of my misery. As our apartment emptied of its belongings, and as we started kicking off things on our list of lost chance to do X, I started to feel the overwhelming surge of tears prickle up my eyes. How could I leave the only place that had come to feel like home? In the last five years, I have been in flux never staying in any apartment or dorm room anywhere for more than three months. The six months I spent in our apartment felt like I had finally put roots down. Haha, <laughs> tragic, I know. And our apartment was a dream. It was spacious, comfy, it had a balcony, skylights, everything. But moreover, it was our first home together after getting married. The place where I confronted a whole host of my mental health issues, to leave this cocoon I had built felt like the worst thing possible. But alas, in the hours and minutes leading up to our move, I felt a stillness. An acceptance at the end of a chapter, and the knowledge that it is necessary to keep moving, to keep taking steps forward in new places, to grow. I didn't leave Boston in tears. I left nervous yet excited for the future. Where would we live? What would we do? Jobless and without an apartment, we were starting over. And although that might seem scary, I'm looking forward every day to building a new life and sharing it with you here. Here's to 2022, to following your dreams, taking risks, accelerating in every sense, and most of all, growing from every lesson learned. Let's do this.